Today I'm going to show you how to build a search feature for your bubble applications. So this is what it's going to look like right here. So this is the listing search page and we can go ahead and type in something, right? Let's search. We're going to look for some luxury listings. It'll show us all of the listings that have luxury in the title. Uh, we can also search by category. So we can type in apartment. It's going to show us all of the apartments in the database and then um, it's another one unique is another category or type of place and then we can also search by the title as well as said before right so we can search by the title search by the category so let me go ahead and show you guys how we do this alrighty so here's the main search page um, fairly simple uh, you just need a basic input uh, form right here throw that on there and then just a button that's all it is for this and um, the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is find a way to send whatever we type into the input to our actual listings page which is right here and so we need to send that data to this page this page has a repeating group and this repeating group will go ahead and display the data um, that is sent over right display filter out the data based on what's sent over so first off, let's go ahead and create a uh, data that we need. So this is the default stuff. So we're going to need listing and option sets. Oh, I've already done that. So category and we have these three different options. If you don't know what an option set is, I would recommend looking that up. Take a look at the uh, bubble documents for option sets. It's basic, basically data that just never changes and so you can use it in multiple different places it's always static it's always in, you know whatever you send here is always going to stay the same cool so now if we go back to data types we got a listing here listing create a new field we're going to do a category and the field type is going to be that option set that we created we create that and then we also need a title for the listing and that's just going to be text and then the final thing, actually, I almost missed it, is going to be the image as seen from the actual demo. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create that. There is no functionality in this little project to actually create listings. And so I'm just going to manually create some for us so that we have something to view um, on the actual page, right? So just give me a second here while I go ahead and upload some data. Awesome. So I've gone ahead and added the listings to the database. So now we can actually view something when we do our searches. You guys can go ahead and do that. You just do view entry. You can put in the different um, fields, fill in the different fields, upload image, etc. Well, so now we need to figure out, like I said at the beginning, how we're going to send what we input here to the listings page. So for the search button here, we're going to go and click on add workflow. And we're going to add an action. And we're going to navigate to the listings page. So go to page, destination, destination, listings. So the way we actually send the data or what you type in the search bar to the listings page is by using a parameter. So send more parameters to the page. We're going to check that on. Essentially what a parameter is, it's kind of what you see up here. ID equals search tutorial video, right? It's kind of telling me, gives us some, some data that we can reference on this page. Um, and so whatever we search on that search page, we're going to throw it in the URL, which will then go to the next page. And then the listings page is going to take that data and then filter out the repeating groups based off of what you search. So send more parameters, add another parameter, you can type whatever you want here. We can do query. And then I'm going to go ahead and find the input uh, value. So we're going to scroll down here, look for input, find your dream stay. Right? That's the one value. And so whatever gets typed there is going to be stored in this key and then sent to the listings page. Now, one other thing we want to do, um, we don't want to be able to click the search bar or the search button if there is nothing in the actual input. So let's go back to data, or I mean workflow, my bad. And we're going to go only when input find your dream stay value is not empty. 
So that right there will prevent us from clicking the button if nothing has been searched or typed in. Nothing has been typed. <clears throat> cool. So that should be about it for the actual search page. So now we're going to go ahead and go to the listings page. Uh, all right. So we got the repeating group here. I've gone ahead and designed it um, to my liking. Right, you can do whatever you want with it. This won't be a tutorial for repeating groups. You can always look that up. Um, but for the functionality to connect to, to filter out the listings based on what's in that parameter, we're going to go ahead and change this type of content to listing, not user. So listing, type of content listing, data source, and do a search for. And then we're going to do a search for type listing. And then we're going to add a constraint and basically say any field contains. So any field contains is going to tell the repeating group to filter all data that includes the query that we typed out, right? So it's going to filter out and that can be from the title and that can also be from the category, right? Because those are our two fields. So then we're going to go ahead and get, uh, get data from page URL type parameter. Parameter name, as we typed that before, was query, query, however you say that, uh, and then type text. So we're going to close that. So it's going to filter out all data that includes whatever we typed into the query. So we, and then you can also sort it if you want to, or create a data or whatever, but we'll just leave that for this purpose. And there you go. That's essentially the functionality for filtering out the filtering out data from the actual uh, search page. So let's go ahead and test it, make sure it's working. Okay, now it's refreshed. So we had that one that was called boot. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Oh, I gotta fix up one second. All right, cool, it's fixed. I just had some data that we deleted stuff on this template so I could show you guys and then this properly but um, there you go so we search the boot and um, we haven't set up functionality to, for this search to work and so that'll be the next thing we do here so we leave that it's just a regular input as before button search we're going to go to add workflow cool so when button search is clicked and there's probably multiple ways to do this um, but in this case we're just going to send the same data again to the same page and kind of refresh it uh, so send more parameters to the page, add another parameter, query, and then it's going to be input A. So that's the input form on the actual page, input A's value. And then we'll do the same thing only when input A value is not empty. There you go. So now if we go back should be able to type in apartment. So cool, now it's gonna show us all the listings that have apartments in their category. But yeah, that is essentially it. Fairly simple, just the input form, button, and uh, parameters. So hope you guys enjoyed and uh, have a good one.